Hey guys, welcome back to the Creative Liberty Podcast. Today I want to talk about education. And some would say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But let's see if we can't fix education. Some would say it's it's pretty broke. So the million dollar question is how do you fund education without raising tax dollars? Because I think everybody's taxed to death as is. So that's the million dollar question. Maybe even a billion dollar question. Private investors, um, community. So... Put that in the back of your mind and think about it. How do you fund education without raising people's property taxes? So for my master's thesis, I had to come up with a, just a a thing to talk about, a plan, you know? And so I took on the, um, the overall schedule for uh, schools and how they're ran and I am a nobody. I'm, I'm a teacher. I have my master's in educational leadership. But there are people out there that can most definitely teach her better than me and who have written books and have PhDs and stuff like that. I'm just some guy who teaches art. What do I know? Right? But here's my idea. What if, what if, here, here's the overarching schedule, which, by the way, uh, does have enough seat time for students, but the over the overall schedule for education would be that we start school back not in August. Remember the days when we started after Labor Day, and then we ended school before Memorial Day. You kind of end end with a vacation, begin with a vacation, and so. Um, Currently, uh, schools are, maybe not right now, but a a few weeks ago, schools were really hot across the nation. Um, What if we push that into the first week of September? We started back after Labor Day. Um, But anyway, I remember growing up that way. That's how schools were. Mm, It's a good mix of coffee this morning. So what if we started school in January? Start school back on the 6th, and we go through the first week or so of December. That's when school ends and you have graduation. And school is eight weeks on and two weeks off. Now, all the research out there tells you that students need brain breaks to retain information better rather than just plowing through, through classes. And if you did eight weeks on and and two weeks off, that gives you plenty of eight weeks to cover a multitude of topics. And some schools could offer more subjects if you did the eight weeks on and two weeks off. Excuse me. Got a little, fighting a little something in my throat and sound like Barry White today. My wife doesn't mind, but I digress. So, eight weeks on, two weeks off, and that's your, that's your school year. Start January 6th, end first week of December. You still get December, almost December, all of December through the first week of January off. Those eight weeks and two weeks hit most major holidays that we would have, but in my scenario, we get rid of most holidays except for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and it just so happens that the 8-2 falls right on Thanksgiving. Now, there's two caveats to this whole shebang. Teachers are paid an extra $10,000 more. So let's start there, and then let's work in the schedule. This, and the reason being, you'll hear it here in a second, teachers will be doing a little bit more. Um, so with that, I think there's... 280-something days in a school year. This gives us about 290-something. But there's also a floating month to play with. And so let's say in January, if you live somewhere where it's incredibly freezing cold, you can use those weeks out of that month or days or the whole month and start in February if you want. Or if it's blazing hot in the summertime, you can take a two-month hiatus from school or a month and a half. 
You can break those months up. And what this allows the states and the cities to do is that this is more of a community-based way of looking at education. What fits your community? And in the real world, we go to work, you know, year round. Um, most people don't have the summers off and, and things like that. Well, so you do the eight weeks on, two weeks off. You still have a good stretch of time in the summer to have summer off. That's actually built in when you look at the schedule. And you can offer more courses. Schools could offer more courses. Let's talk about the two weeks. The two weeks, the first week, you can offer two things. One, that's when all IEPs and meetings and things like that can get be gotten out of the way. You're not taking up class time or teacher's planning time to do that. Then you can um, offer two paths. One is for all the kids who need like credit recovery, tutoring, things like that from eight to noon, that's when that happens. Also, you can offer college credit. Eight to noon, I would only offer that maybe from like 10th graders to, to seniors. But for a whole year, in those two weeks, they can knock out several college courses over the course of their, their high school career. So now when they leave high school, they're saving their parents $30,000 or, or more in college tuition and, and things like that. And they're not in college as long, right? Um, you could offer trades. You could have apprenticeships at your schools. So when the kids come out of high school, they're ready to go. Welding, plumbing, electricians, whatever. You name it. And they've already got the credentials and the experience to just start working. And there are a lot of students who would much rather just do that. So that's what you offer the first, the first week of the two weeks that are off. And then everybody's off that last week. That's the second week. Everybody's off that week. And then, um, and of course, you know, teachers would need to have their master's in order to, to teach those upper-level courses, those college courses. But what we do in those eight weeks is we offer courses that are pretty much uninterrupted. You know, teachers, one, they're getting a higher pay, so that's good. That's kind of like combat pay, so there's some breathing room there. They're not having to get a second job or a third job. Uh, they can support their families. Two, uh, their, their planning times and stuff are uninterrupted. They're able to plan and, and be the professionals that they've been hired to be and really dive in deep with, um, with, their, with their subjects. So a kid could get English 1, 2, and 3 or photography 1, 2, 3, 4 out of the way in a whole year. And the school systems could equip those teachers, invest in those teachers to teach more subjects. So that's the eight weeks. You got the two weeks. Sports, again, it's, it goes back to the community. Do, and they can vote on it, do the sports, do they want to meet those two weeks for practices in between? Sure, yes, maybe. Maybe it's just the first week. Maybe it's both weeks. Maybe it's just the last week. I'll, again, I would argue that that would be the time that everybody's off. Everybody has a, after nine weeks or eight weeks, and if you're not a teacher that's volunteering to teach um, upper-level courses, college courses, or, or tutoring or anything like that, fine. You're off for two weeks after the first eight weeks or after the eight weeks. <clears throat> so that's the, that's the umbrella. So we'd start in January, end in December. Now, when I say... Mm -hmm year-round school, people cringe, because that's not what we can call it. We can't call it, oh, we're going to do year-round schooling. It's not year-round schooling. You're on for eight weeks, you're off for two. You're on for eight, you're off for two. You're on for eight, you're off for two. Uh, from December, from January to December. So your actual school year begins in January, ends in December, and we're not on the agricultural schedule that was created way back when. That's the idea. Poke holes in it. 
take your shotgun, blow some holes in it. Um, everything else kind of just functions as is, you know, busing and after school stuff that can continue to, to be a part of all of that. Um, I've had people look at this and, and they've said people higher than me because when I did it for my master's, my colleagues were like, well, is there enough seat time in there for this? And I was like, and the lady teaching the class, she was like, yep, sure is. So eight weeks on, two weeks off, gives kids breaks, gives them brain breaks. The community would have to rally around this because um, a lot of kids have after school either sports or jobs. And as an employer, I would be happy to know that my student who's working for me can come in after school. And then when school is not in session, they can work for me straight for two weeks. And so I think communities could also rally behind that. And then maybe that's how we get community involvement. If the communities are thriving and the kids are enjoying school and not skipping school and learning stuff, learning new skills, new trades that maybe even actually might help them on their job site, we could even partner with those kids' uh, jobs, those kids that just hate school. Like, I don't want to be here. I want to go work. Great. Let's partner with your boss and your job. You show up every day, you do the work, and you graduate. Why not? Why not? They don't need to know the Pythagorean theorem. They don't need to know Shakespeare. They just want to work. And some kids have to because they're helping their parents put food on the table. Those kids are few and far between. But for the majority of the kids, uh, learning, learning skills, getting their education, getting college education out of the way before college is, I think, super important. So that's my overarching kind of umbrella of how we can start working towards a more community-based education uh, system where, you know, the parents are involved. They get to vote on, like, hey, do we want to adopt this or not? Because your, your parents are going to have to be on board with it. The community businesses are going to have to be on board with it. The school is going to definitely have to be on board with it. And, yeah. So I'd be all, all for a more community-based approach. Um, really haven't come up with a name for it yet, um, other than year-round schooling. Um, but it's not year-round schooling. Um, intermittent schooling, I don't know. You got a great idea for a name for it? Put it in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, that's my idea. Um, start in January, end in December. Eight weeks on, two weeks off. Eight weeks on, two weeks off. Y'all can do the math on that. I've done it somewhere. I think it ends up being 13, eight weeks or something like that. And uh, But those two weeks... I think those two weeks are great for brain breaks, uh, gives teachers and students a breather, and then they come back. They learn a subject in eight weeks. If they don't learn, if, if, if the subject is a long subject, they come right back to that subject. So it's not like they have to do different subjects every eight weeks. So they can pick right back up where they left off, but the kids can retain more information by having those breaks. So I also have a daily schedule that I'll probably just be pushing out later. I won't get into that on this one because I don't want it to be a 45-minute podcast. So thank you for listening. I'll see you all in the next one, and I hope you're doing well. And uh, you teachers out there, would you, would you enjoy this? Would you like an eight-week, two-week teaching schedule throughout the year? Mm. <sighs> Coffee. It's what gets us through our work days. All right. Thanks again for listening to the Creative Liberty Podcast. I can't talk today. The coffee's woken me up, but it hasn't woken my tongue up. I'm just really drinking the hot coffee to help my throat. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, a lot of people are really hesitant to change, and I'm okay with that. I don't mind trying things out, especially if they work, especially if it's for the betterment of our students. But I really doubt... You've got to convince the community that this is a if, – if teachers are on board with it, you can't come in and heavy-handed heavy do it. Your community has to be on board with it because if it doesn't fit your community, then don't do it.
simple. Come up with something that does work. And maybe the agricultural model is what's best for some communities. All right. Thanks again. I appreciate your patronage. Appreciate you listening. I will see you all in the next one.